Hello, welcome to the Biostock Studio here at the Medicom Village in Lund. Today we're taking a closer look at Immunicum, a biotech company based in Stockholm and with research facilities in Leiden and the Netherlands, developing cancer immunotherapies. Today, I'm pleased to be joined in the studio by Eric Manting, CEO of Immunicum. Welcome, Eric. Good morning, Michael. Um, well, I'd like to begin by discussing the merger, the, the famous merger with DC Prime that happened in November 2020. Um, how has the merger strengthened the company for, for Immunicum? Sure. Well, I think uh, what was striking was that this merger was uh, almost perfect and you don't encounter that uh, a lot. And the reason I say that is, is uh, on the one hand, we have a, a, a technology basis and that technology basis is quite specific. Um, cell therapies, a lot of people now have revolutionized cancer therapy, uh, but it also um, brought to the surface that it is actually very specific technology, uh, both in terms of manufacturing, in terms of understanding how to safely manage these products and administer them to patients, but also how they work actually in the body. And that basis was the basis for the merger. Mm -hmm. And uh, Immunicum was closest to DC Prime uh, in terms of technology basis. So we were also, I think, the most direct competitors. But by combining the company, mm -hmm. we really now capture a specialization that will drive the, the value for the company, but also the pipeline moving forward. The other two elements that I think were very important was that uh, the pipeline addresses key challenges in the cancer therapy field. So on the one hand, a lot of tumors are still resistant to actually everything which is available today, so mm -hmm. existing therapies. Um, and on the other hand, tumor recurrence is still um, yeah, one of the factors that determines the outcome of any cancer treatment with mm -hmm. many tumors. Mm -hmm. And we now are positioned in these both fields. So from that therapeutic perspective, uh, I think we are also uh, providing for a basis for uh, addressing the key challenges that will hopefully contribute to, uh, to a next generation of cancer therapies. Uh, and then lastly, on the organizational level, uh, Immunicum had focused mostly on uh, its clinical studies and also the organization here in Sweden, in Stockholm and Göteborg, was mostly regulatory, clinical and regulatory people. Uh, whereas in uh, the Netherlands, on the DC Prime side of things, uh, the research side and also the process development side, so the side with which we um, uh, try to improve our manufacturing processes, was already in-house. And because there was so much technology overlap, we could immediately integrate the science behind uh, Immunicum and Elixir Dancel into that group. So in the end, I think both uh, on an organization level and on a, let's say, medical scientific level, it was, it was a very good merger. Mm -hmm. um, well, you, you talked a little bit about a revamped uh, pipeline, development pipeline. So you basically have two main candidates now, Elix and Dessel, which comes from previous Immunicum, and uh, DCP001, which mm -hmm. is your new, um, your new candidate. Uh, how does this new candidate add value to Immunicum specifically? Yeah, I think in two ways. Um, on the one hand, uh, it provides for a new angle in the treatment of tumors. And um, the reason is that the, the basis of the product is different. So Elixir Dancel uh, is a product with dendritic cell biology and dendritic cells can prime the immune system, mm -hmm. uh, but it is administered into the tumor where it then recruits immune cells and it triggers an anti-tumor response. So you need a tumor uh, to administer the product. What we do with DCP-001 is providing for a vaccination when the tumor has been treated, where it's gone or virtually gone. Um, and there are certain diseases like AML, in which you do a study now, uh, but also in ovarian cancer, where the tumor recurrence is actually what kills the patients. Mm -hmm. So the initial treatment is actually quite effective and also on the clinical uh, level, patients often achieve remission, eh, so they, they, they seem healthy. But then when there's underlying disease, it comes back and uh, that causes in the end uh, a tumor which is much more difficult to treat. But that window was unaddressable with the Lixa mm -hmm. because there's no tumor. Mm -hmm. And with DCP-001, we have on the one hand um, a, a platform which is nice because we can manufacture it in a different way. We are not reliable on donor material, but we start with a cell line. Mm -hmm. uh, but also because the product carries its own antigens, it works like a vaccine, and we can apply it in a different therapeutic setting. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, okay, so tumor recurrence is, is uh, 
let's say, um, what you're working to, to have a vaccine for, mm -hmm. in a sense. Um, so why is it so challenging to treat tumor recurrence? Um, it is challenging because it is following initial treatment. Mm -hmm. And um, with many tumors, we know that there is a big chance of recurrence, but we don't know exactly why. Uh, sometimes you can see residual tumors, but sometimes you can't. Mm -hmm. But today we have much better methods to, to, to measure what we call residual disease. Mm -hmm. And AML is now also a term quite often used, minimal or measurable residual disease. But then you have a patient that has undergone uh, a, a, a serious treatment, cancer treatment, quite often also um, you know, affecting their health. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know you have to do something because there's residual disease, but you can't just keep on throwing um, heavy therapies after it because the body can't bear it. And uh, that is what makes it difficult to treat. So you have to have something which is relatively mild mm -hmm. that, that the patient can bear. Uh, the other thing is you want to have a longer term effect. Uh, you can't uh, treat a little bit of disease uh, very shortly and then wait it f for it to come back. You have to come up with a treatment that is really sustainable mm -hmm. and providing for, for more durable responses. And that is where vaccination, uh, which leads in the end to an immune response and also immune memory. So the immune system is able to, over a longer period of time, suppress uh, the disease, offers a solution. Mm -hmm. Anything else is quite challenging because you're dealing with this minimal disease setting. Once a tumor comes back, it's a whole different picture. They're quite often very difficult to treat. Mm -hmm. So then we're not talking about the prevention of tumor recurrence, but when the tumor has actually recurred. Mm -hmm. And then they often fail to respond to the initial therapy. And that's why they're also very often yeah, the lethal phase of, the, of yeah. the disease. So that's why we're trying to prevent it. Yeah, and I guess with the recurrence, the tumor also becomes resistant. There's these resistant mechanisms. Um, Absolutely. So I'd like to discuss Immunicum's business strategy a little bit. Uh, if you could talk about that a little bit more. Sure. Yeah, I think there's two things to distinguish, which is one, the, um, the clinical side of things. Yeah? So we are developing products and we need to uh, think about uh, how we optimally do that. Mm -hmm. And that is something we do not do by ourselves. We also ask for a lot of advice from, from doctors, key opinion leaders. Uh, we, we, we try to keep a good finger on the pulse with, with industry where they are moving. Uh, but you need to design your clinical trial strategy, your clinical study strategy carefully. Um, the other thing, since we are a business, relates to how you build your products out into a business eventually. And there's two ways to do it. You do it by yourself or you partner it. And that is another thing we take into consideration. So particularly for larger indications, where in the end you have to do big studies with a lot of patients, um, companies tend to partner those. And we may do also, but um, uh, if you have the strength to continue to develop your product, you capture more value yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is where there is a tipping point. So we need to distinguish as a company moving forward where we work on smaller indications like gastrointestinal stromal tumors, for example, which is quite a rare uh, but very deadly tumor, mm -hmm. uh, difficult to treat, mm -hmm. um, but where we can hopefully with a smaller study get the product to the next uh, clinical uh, phase of development. Um, same thing for AML, it's a relatively rare disease. So uh, we will continue with those smaller indications uh, by developing them as far as possible by ourselves, mm -hmm. whereas for larger indications uh, like renal cell carcinoma, for example, we may opt to, to partner with industry. And mm -hmm. that, that's, r that's, I'm not saying it, this, all of this will happen, but it is how we anticipate we will move these programs forward. Mm -hmm. Um, well, uh, to, to finish things off, I wanted to ask you about um, Immunicum participating in multiple industry and uh, uh, investor meetings in the coming weeks, uh, I would say. What is your goal at these meetings? Well, the most important goal is to stay connected with everybody. And of course, it's been a challenge in the last uh, 12, 18 months with the COVID crisis to, to really stay connected in the sense of meeting with people. Mm -hmm. But um, um, everybody's trying their best and using different channels to stay in touch. Of course, we have contacts that we can always reach out to. But to be on a conference uh, allows you, you know, to, to sort of provide an update mm -hmm. to the community and also the other way around to get an update. So they provide for a natural moment to, um, yeah, to basically communicate more um, and uh, to stay connected is the main, is the main goal with mm -hmm. both investors and with uh, industry, the landscape around us. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thanks so much for answering these questions and thank you for joining us today. It was a pleasure to have you on.
Thanks, Michael.